Got major breaking news out of Russia at this hour. The volatile chief of the Wagner paramilitary group, this guy, Yevgeny Prigozhin, once a Putin ally, claims that he has left Ukraine at the head of a column of troops and has crossed into Russia in some sort of a challenge to the Russian defense minister with whom he's been waging a war of words since the outset of the Russian invasion of, Russia, of Ukraine last year. Prigozhin, who was hired by Russian President Vladimir Putin last year to mobilize Wagner mercenaries to Ukraine, posted a message on social media media this afternoon accusing Russia's Minister of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, of pushing Putin to invade Ukraine under, quote, false pretenses. He also accused the Russian military of providing Putin with inaccurate information about the status of the war and claimed that Russia is, in fact, losing ground on the battlefield. Not long after posting that message at around 9 p.m. local time, Prigozhin posted another message blaming the Russian military for carrying out an alleged attack against against his troops, killing, quote, a huge amount of his own forces in Ukraine. Now, this is something that Russia has since denied. Prigozhin vowed to retaliate, which prompted Russian officials to open a criminal case against him. Okay, so just understand this for a second. This means that the head of the most effective part of Russia's ground war in Ukraine, without whom Russia would not have been where they are today, could now soon be under arrest in his own country, which is where he claims to be right now. It's hard to make sense of this. Russian military officials have taken to national television to accuse, accuse Prigozhin of trying to stage a coup. Now, whether or not his threat has any teeth, we, we just don't know. But the information we're receiving from reporters inside Russia is that the country and the military are right now at this hour on high alert. Video circulating widely on social media and shared by the Moscow Times showed armored vehicles being deployed in Moscow and near the front line in Ukraine, where Prigozhin's fighters are gathered. Medusa, an investigative outlet critical of Putin, is also reporting that Russia's domestic intelligence service is asking Wagner fighters not to obey Prigozhin's criminal and treacherous orders and to take steps to detain him. Other Russian generals, like the one seen here, seated next to a rifle, are appealing to fighters to ignore the calls for rebellion. Prigozhin attempted to clarify today, by the way, that he's not attempting a coup. But government officials in Ukraine are saying that a column of Wagner soldiers have now passed checkpoints in the direction of Moscow. And a new audio posted by Prigozhin says his fighters are now inside Russia. There's a lot here. And we have not confirmed any of this in information independently. We've just gathered it for you now, and we'll let you know what we do and when we can confirm it. But the impact and the fear that this is generating, generating not just inside Russia, but around the world, is palpable. Russian stocks are now down more than 3% in uh, after-hours trading. And the, 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 the banners running at the bottom of the 24-hour Russian state television channel say that the statements and the actions of Prigozhin amount to a call for an armed civil conflict. It is too early to predict how or if this is going to have a, an impact on the war in Ukraine. But for months now, Prigozhin's mercenary fo forces, Wagner Group, have played a key role in this battle, taking control at times of the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut in the east, where the longest and bloodiest battle of the war has taken place. Joining us now is NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. Uh, Richard, thank you for joining us. I know you're in Taipei right now, but I need to talk to you about this because you understand all of this. The war, uh, Sergei Prigozhin and the Wagner Group's role in this whole thing. What, in your estimation, is happening right now? So this is a long brewing conflict. And as you said, the details of what's exactly happening right at this moment are a little bit unclear. Uh, but if you listen to multiple sources coming out of the uh, Russian officials, out of Russian media, uh, these direct appeals by Russian generals, it appears that this internal strife that has been brewing for a long time is now spilling over into a potential arm Armed conflict. So, first of all, a little bit, who is Yevgeny Prigozhin? Yevgeny Prigozhin is a Kremlin insider. He's very close to Vladimir Putin, uh, or at least was very close to Vladimir Putin. He was sometimes described as Putin's chef. Uh, 
Uh, it's not clear that he actually ever cooked for, uh, for Putin. He was more of a caterer, but he goes back to the inner circle days when Putin was rising to power in St. Petersburg. But he has moved well beyond the, the catering business. Since at least 2014, he has established this Wagner Group. He established a private mercenary army. And the reason he was able to establish this According to members that, uh, of Wagner that I've spoken to, former members, uh, I've traveled to, to several different countries where Wagner has operations, including uh, in the Central African Republic, uh, spent, spent quite a bit of time uh, focusing on, on this subject. So uh, in 2014, roughly, Wagner uh, began to have an armed force initially in Ukraine because there was a need. Uh, there was a need because uh, the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin, wanted to keep fighting in that country. This was just around the time and just after the time of the takeover of Crimea. But he wanted to do it in a way that was off the books, in a way that you could use expendable fighters that didn't really uh, impact the population. So uh, Wagner, Evgeny Prigozhin, raised his hand, said, I have an army. Uh, I can create an army. I can use former veterans. I can use criminals. I can use people that the Russian population won't really miss if they die on the battlefield. And I can provide this auxiliary force to, to Russia. It was accepted. Prigozhin uh, formed Wagner Group all the way back in, uh, in 2014. It was small. It was secretive. Then it started to grow. When uh, Vladimir Putin decided to back up Bashar al-Assad in Syria, another military interve intervention that Putin wanted to have off the books, a military campaign that didn't require troop call-ups, that wouldn't impact the, the Russian population in an uh, in emotional or physical way, Prigozhin stepped in. Since then, his operations have continued to grow. He expanded into Africa, which is a, a way for, for the operation to, to, to raise money. They, they, they extract a lot of uh, gold illegally, a lot of blood diamonds from places like the Central African Republic. We had a story on that uh, a few weeks ago. Once they started fighting on multiple fronts uh, and were able to generate their own revenue stream, Prigozhin established his own power base. He became a force to reckon with inside Russia. And then with this latest war in Ukraine that began about a year and a half ago, Prigozhin entered in a major way. Wagner expanded uh, exponentially. Uh, it, it went from a small secretive force operating in little known conflicts that the Russian people weren't talking about to the main war effort, which is the war in Ukraine. And once his fighters started to engage in combat, in some cases performed better than the regular army, then a rivalry began. A rivalry that, uh, that, that at times has been extremely tense because Prigozhin uh, has for months now been accusing the, uh, the, the defense establishment, particularly the defense ministry, of undermining his forces. And he has accused uh, the, the defense minister, Shoigu in Russia, specifically of treating him like a rival, treat, treating him like an enemy, of not giving his forces uh, the ammunition that they need. Prigozhin at times has stood in front of the bodies of his men who died in the, in the city of Bakhmut and said, these men died because the Russian military establishment isn't giving them what they need, is treating like, them like an enemy. What we saw apparently over the last 24 hours was a whole new level of escalation. What Prigozhin is, is, is saying is that Russian forces deliberately attacked a group of Wagner fighters who were, uh, who were camped in the forest and killed a large number of them. Again, no clear verification, but what does seem clear is that these tensions have, have escalated to, a, to an entirely different level, a new category. And then what Prigozhin allegedly said in these, in these audio recordings that are difficult to verify was that 
He is now so furious, so livid that he is taking his men. He's taking tens of thousands of them, and he's going to rectify the situation himself by marching toward Moscow, marching toward the city of Rostov. He says it's not a coup, but that he wants to make sure that the people responsible for now consistently denying uh, ammunition and support to, to his men and then killing his men. Uh, the FSB, the, the Russian intelligence service, says that this is a coup. Numerous generals have called on his men directly not to obey these orders. But if this, if this is playing out the way it seems that it plays out, uh, it, it appears that these long brewing tensions are now turning into something of an, uh, of an insurrection. Now, among journalists, frankly, uh, we've been watching this, this tension, as U.S. military officials have been watching, and waiting for a moment like this, waiting for a, a moment when this this verbal tension, these accusations uh, that that Prigozhin has been leveling at the at the Kremlin, particularly at the defense minister, would boil over into something uh, like like direct armed conflict or or an assassination attempt against Prigozhin, but but escalating beyond words. Richard, uh, if somebody could see the behind the scenes here uh, this evening as this was unfolding and we were playing the game of where is Richard Engel because we need to talk to him about this, I'm glad we, we found you because uh, there is nobody who could provide that level of detail into what is a remarkably confusing situation that's unfolding right now on the ground in Russia. So we're grateful to you, sir. Thank you. Richard Engel is our chief foreign correspondent.